Hello everyone, just a quick note before this episode actually starts is this is actually going to be part one of the ending of Disco Elysium. Uh, I started recording and going through the session thinking that it would probably wrap up because it was feeling very, very close to the end. Um, so I just kept the cameras rolling and I kept uh, recording and it ended up being almost uh, four and a half hours long in the ending stretch. So this will be part one uh, and then the next episode will be the ending to, to Disco Elysium. So I just wanted to leave that note in here that uh, we will get to a point in this episode where it will uh, where we'll fade out and we'll say a preemptive uh, goodbye um, because the episode is just, is just massive. So I am going to split it up in a couple of pieces. So uh, with that in mind, sit back, enjoy part one of the Disco Elysium ending. Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 26. Last time we crossed over using Lillian's boat to get to the Sea Fortress and then we had a bit of an interesting dream, uh, a miserable and sad dream uh, with our ex Dora represented by Dolores Day, um, you know, the manifestation of innocence, you know, so it was such a, such a, like very confronting sort of situation for for Harry to experience and we've just woken up from that and we're now needing to explore more of the sea fortress area uh we're gonna get this generator up and running so we're gonna go look for some fuel out on the beach um and then I guess see what else uh see what else lies ahead so I think we've got door over this side um and then we've got a door over this side as well. So I guess I'll go out here. I want to try this side first. Water rushes below. Far down below. Let's go check out outside. A firing slit. You can't see inside. And there's a thing to check over here. The inside of the fortress, you make out the console and the blast door. The pain in your pelvis makes you wince, then you continue. Yeah, just getting those like physical the, the physical pain coming in from that from that gunshot. If you go all the way to the end. The ice cracks under your feet. Be careful not to fall through. God, the whole waking up and then like walking across the water thing was just <laughs> wild last episode. The reeds sway strangely. No, it's nothing. Insulindian phasmids, they're in the reeds. They're in the reeds on this side. You can hear them. They all live on this side, I promise. The distant sound of cargo ships, signal horns echo on the water. It must have been a direct hit to take out such a huge chunk. Wow, the music on this Sea Fortress area right now. The music has just been consistently amazing across the entire game. Like, genuinely has just been consistently amazing across across the whole game. I, I love it so much and it just it really captures a lot of emotions. It captures a lot of emotions. Um, most of them miserable um, and it really reflects the state of the world and like feelings for a lot of things and I, I genuinely feel that one of the everything about this game is really really strong but the music is such a strong element it really helps to tie a lot of things uh, together um, and this is a beautiful a beautiful piece the winch is broken rust is eaten at what remains of the chain a strange feeling looking at the water maybe you should just wander off into the sea leave it all and walk him. Just like our dream. Why? Perhaps there's someone there, under the water, waiting for you. Where it has always been. In front of the video rental, on the corner, yep. at the crossing. Yep, the dream, but it's cold. Yes, cold and still. <clears throat> but love is warm, like the inside of her mouth. God damn, honestly, like, and then going into the dream and carrying on from that last episode, like, 
Harry's dream and how hung up he is and how his inability and stubbornness to not process what he's been going through in a healthy way and to move on from that previous relationship, like, it has absolutely gutted him. Like, the dream also addressed the fact that there was a child at some point that was terminated and uh, there's another child... Uh, with the new guy and like that's a whole other layer to really go through like what if you know that before all of this before all of this mess happened what if there was you know a part of Harry that wanted to be able to retire from service and how to have a family um, but instead the fork in the road determined that instead of being able to pull back from a stressful job uh, and maybe take up that position, take up that um, that promotion to a desk job instead of being on the field like he's declined twice before. Uh, you know, maybe there was a, you know there was a situation where he could have taken that desk job and had a had a family, had a child, uh, and that was you know Harry had clearly um, you know messed up along the way, or they both messed up along the way, and the relationship came to an end and instead of Harry moving on from that like I said like it's just it's just completely consumed him and seeing that it's not actually just a a part of the story um at, uh, towards the beginning that just kind of gives you like a bit of a hook for the character is like ah yeah this detective he's miserable and he's hung up on a lost love and love did him in and you know all that kind of stuff uh, it's you, the further you get into the game, and once you get up to this part of the game, you actually realize just how messed up Harry is because of it. Uh, how it's actually like a really like seemingly one of the core parts of his character as it currently is, and why he's gone off the deep end so much is that that obsession. Uh, because yeah, like it's it's definitely not a small thing to be glossed over. It's like, oh yeah, he had an ex and it troubles him. It's like, no, nah, this is kind of like one of the big reasons Harry is the way that he is. And it comes up in his dreams. He's always reminded of her uh, with tastes and smells and instinctually dialing uh, her number like and, and talking to her over the phone. The dreams that um, we were given, we were told that like a reoccurring, like, I'll see you again because this dream will happen again. Like, um, it's, it really is just, um, just a mess, especially. And the, and then the, the big, the beginning of the episode, the beginning of, sorry, the beginning of the game, how, uh, what happened Sunday night when Harry was listening to that tape and he was, and it comes on and it ends in like, obviously seemingly like this rage blackout where he rips the tape apart and then passes out on the floor. Um, it's, it's so, it's so sad. I, I feel like, a, a, cause a, a lot of people relate to some very raw, uh, and massive feelings associated with, uh, breakups and relationships ending, um, in many ways, many shapes, many forms of how that actually occurs. Um, you know, I've I've been there. I've been there too. And you you move on from the you move on from those things. But um, yeah, sometimes they're just the ones that really just stab you through the heart. And we're seeing that in a in a middle aged police detective who doesn't have anything else going for him in life except the job, um, and it is fucking destroying him. Which is like what uh, Classier was mentioning about what Harry was screaming in his room before he blacked out. Uh, it's just such an important part of the story um, that just underlines, it just underlines the, the whole story for me, is um, the apricot-scented one, you know? This game is genuinely um, miserable in such a good way. You know, like it really shows you just um, some really, some really raw human uh, emotions and experiences, and the way that while this is a fictitious world, this is a fictional reality with its own locations and characters and all of that, 
every character that you speak to, connect with, uh, have these conversations with in your lists and your trees, you know, is so genuinely uh, real and and grounded. And the, the, even the silly options are they're not they're not too silly, you know. And our dark mysteries and the supernatural elements, like you know, they're not too wacky. They're not too wild. It's kind of like just a bit of this weirdness that happens here and there, but genuinely this this is such a, a fleshed out world location uh, and characters that you could give or take some things in this game. You could like say if someone had no idea what this game was, someone could tell you, Oh, this game is based on a true story. This game is like a, like a, or a real experience or, or something like that. And you can play through this game with that in mind. And it, and it fucking, uh, it would pass that. It would pass that test. If you were to be like, this actually happened, you know, um, that's how, that's how fleshed out this world is. That's how uh, grounded, uh, this, this story is how, how real the characters feel. And I've, we've felt that since the very beginning It's just like, you can just really lose yourself in conversation with one person for a really long time. Just like the conversations that you have with Joyce, giving you a reality lowdown, um, and, and teaching you about the, uh, all of that kind of stuff. It's like, obviously the big supernatural, uh, supernatural element of the game is, is the pale, which is, you know, um, not the, most realistic element but it, it fits so well in in this world and and this story and i just wanted to take that brief moment while we're at the kind of the beginning of this episode and things start to um things start to progress that i just wanted to take that moment to really touch on um like my appreciation for the for the details in this game for the for the writing uh, and the story in this game and i like dude i cannot wait for what these developers will do next uh i, I absolutely cannot wait uh, a sequel um and a, a different game anything like i will be i will be watching like a hawk <laughs> for for what continues to come um from from these guys because it's 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 honestly it's honestly um really really impressive so with that little touch on harry's personality and my appreciation for the game out of the way uh we'll continue for this inland empire thought um love is warm like the inside of her mouth no 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 yes 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 i know no no we're not starting with that <laughs> not now not this time this thought is over Raise your sight. In the snowing mirror of the bay, you see Martinez reflected. Tall edifices of ruins reach into the water, like shimmering towers. And the shacks too. Pine trees and motor lorries, upside down. Islets and posts, like stepping stones, lead into the water in front of you. Go. Step in. It's been too long. And then we see if we can, can we walk on it? <laughs> there's no, there's no pathway that I can walk on. It was all just a dream. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to check out this side first because of, uh, obviously us walking out. Um, so I wanted to see what would be over this side in relation to the dream. A weathered artillery map shows coordinates in the Bay of Revachol. Uh, an old medicine cabinet, newly stocked with uh, druamine. The depot that supplied this chain is long gone from the coast. Ah, oh, nice. Lum fuel canister. That's some fuel, baby. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab, only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures. Firing slits, like two eyes in the wall. B triple prime. This looks like a good place to shoot from. Ooh, we're looking for gun residue then. Inspect the mattress. A single person mattress. Modern. Civilian use. Brand name. Marjorie. There's a fuel stain on the cover, along with cigarette burns. And an empty can of beans on the ground next to it, filled to the brim with cigarette butts. Beans? That's a symbol of communism. Pick one out of the can. 
The silhouette of a tobacco picker adorns the paper filter. The brand, Tio Moteri. Contemporary River Sholians prefer Druan, a local blend from the Southern Islands, or Astra, the legendary cigarette from Grad. Tio Moteri is favored by older men for its paper filter tips, sweet smell, and added tar. Yep, these are the cigarettes we found at Land's End, remember? I may have been wrong when I said it wasn't important. This means the same person could have visited both locations. Yeah, there you go, Kim. I didn't see any signs of smoking inside, though. If people live there, they keep it tidy. This here may also be a smoking spot. Inspect the wall. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you, like a little window. Touch the concrete first. Quite old and grimy from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. Look through the hole in the concrete. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation, a tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of Martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you, wow. like a tiny landscape painting. One kilometer across the water, the ruins look familiar. On the left? A towering skyscraper its top floors shaved off by artillery fire. Capeside Apartments. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33A and 33B. On the right. The red chimney and collapsed back of the four-story tenement in front of the whirling in rags. Rue de saint Gislaine, 10. The doomed commercial area. And between the two. The box-shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. You see a small fleck of white on the rooftop, the upstairs window of Clasia's room, in the snow, reflecting light. Motherfucker. What does that mean? Do you have line of sight to the window? Yes, there's an opening between 33A and 10. I can see to the roof. I can see it, through the scope of a rifle. The shooter would be prone, lying on a mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. Dead. Cheek against the cheek rest. Hand on the hair trigger on a calm day like this. <laughs> I wonder what our percentage roll would be to, to make the shot. Kim, I could make it. I could make the shot. Good. I think we have it, Detective. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. Nice. Affirmative. Nice. Plenty of reasons why we didn't come here before. And it's not better late than never, because people died. Finally. In our defense, nothing pointed here. Many, many leads pointed elsewhere. Yeah. And six people are dead, we could have prevented it, but like, we, we, yeah. Kim is right. Honest, honestly, Kim, you, Kim is right. He looks north, over the fortification, then at the mattress. Because hindsight is twenty twenty. When you have the answer in front of you, uh, that you didn't have before it's easy to go fuck we could have done this we could have prevented this we could have done all of that and that's a that's a trap you didn't have the tools the information or anything uh, available to you that you did now in the present to be able to change what happened then again his face twitches could the shooter still be here where right here point at the mattress um, on this island he does not answer just nods. With his back hunched, he looks around once more and says, he feels uncomfortable suddenly. Mm. We should move now. Yeah. Turn away. Because we might be in, we, we could, we could be in trouble. What's that? Oh, nice. What do you mean? There's a rain soaked. Be triple prime. Okay. Let's have a look at what we've got. Uh, items. So, there's still some fuel in this battered canister. A liter or two. The metal looks decades old. The logo of the automotive manufacturer, LUM, has faded on the side. Uh, we have a skill point. We do have a skill point. And I am curious as to what I want to put it in. What do I want to put it in? 
Maybe what I'll do is I'll keep it just in case a situation comes up where I need to level like a skill in a conversation or something. I'll uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep a hold uh, hold on it. We won't level it up just yet. Okay, so that's this section. So we've got fuel, and we also found the origin of the shot. You feel eyes on your back. Someone's watching, but you can't say where. Oh, man. Okay. It's tense being here, because this is a... this. There was a sniper who assassinated someone from a very long distance here. We are wide out in the open carrying naught but pistols, you know? We are prime targets if we're on this island. We don't know if there are more... We don't know if there are more... Um, different types of weapons on this place, not just a sniper. Okay, we're now going to go out this door over the other side. You see a small metal door nested inside a larger one, a heavy steel blast door. Oh. There is a conventional keyhole above the handle. It's very small. This door must open with the generator then actually so we'll put the fuel in then this door should get open what's on the other side another part of the island probably the lock looks like it could still be usable how do we open this maybe this is one of the doors we don't open he's right it would be better to open its big brother a powerful engine hangs mm. under the ceiling yes it must control the blast door okay <laughs> no, this isn't one more door we're opening it. You're right, we opened the big one. Do you see controls anywhere? Yeah, on the console just southeast of here. Remember? Let's look around. Getting the blast door open seems like the best plan. Okay. Let's go to the generator. An old cylindrical generator is nested above the ammo lift, with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall, to your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. It's cold now, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Where do these wires lead? Downstairs, into the console, then from there into the room's electronics. What kind of generator is this? Liquid carbon. I would imagine it takes mazout. The kind that's favored by vagrants and fuel thieves. It's been a long winter, long and cold. If anyone stayed here, they'd need a generator. Tap on the side. A hollow ring. The canister is empty. Dust falls from the generator and down into the ammo lift. What does this mean, a generator here? I don't know. I'm not a philosopher. That is his idea of a joke. <laughs> uh, do we have to kick the... Generator. I am. This generator proves the universe is material. Kick the generator. Oh, why did you kick it so hard? I thought it was going to be like a light kick. He knows. <laughs> he even smiles. I didn't lose any health, though. That must be a sign of my endurance being high enough to not get damaged like the mailbox. I didn't think it was going to be like one of those, I guess it's kind of obvious that he would do like a, a big old kick like with anything else that has had the option to punch it or kick it, but I just thought it was going to be like a, like it's material and give it a light little kick. But I meant, why is it here? Someone with basic electrical skills has restored it in order to keep the room warm. Maybe it's the fire guy. The fire guy. The wind outside picks up suddenly with a faint howl. Inside, it's warm. Pour fuel into the tank. The lieutenant assists you, holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown, viscous fluid pours out, and the room fills with a chemical smell. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. Pull the rope. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old war horse before settling down to a rattle. That should do it. Okay. Generator's on. Man.
A dim golden glow animates the console. It's on. Turn emergency open. Automatic boot. Could this open the blast door? I think, yes. Let's see. That one. The emergency open. What if we push light interior? The lighting in the room hey. turns on with a sizzle. A dim, ambient orange. Slide radio dial. The dial slides under the dusty glass. Dial. Insular. It's an air-gapped system. An off-air military model. Okay. It's Let's so turn emergency open. Possible to bend. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. Nice. With how the blast door was positioned before, it makes it almost seem like the blast door was semi-closed only to the point where you could actually use that key to go through that smaller door. And the person who lives here probably has that key instead of going to the effort to fuel up the generator. A sudden wave of anxiety makes your skin crawl. Mm-hmm. After you. I'm feeling the tension. Before. Outside. When we were walking across the sand, I felt someone watching me. So did I. Not back there, but I felt it since we came here. What's there? I don't know. A thin wisp of smoke rises from a charred black fire pit. The wind picks up, then dies down again. Let's go. Oh, oh god, okay. We're heading out. The game auto-saved for me as I quick save too. Walk slow. It might be dangerous. It's literally just finding the, the murder weapon at this point. It, this bugs me to no end that this is in here. Get out of my task list so I can complete it fully without that being in there. I should have just addressed the cheating. God damn it. Okay, we're going outside. Okay. feel an incredible amount of tension right now. I'm just going to walk. A rubber dinghy. It's deflated. Broken. Small white flowers blossom all around you. We are just... Oh my god! Okay. He's just, just a dude. There's just a dude with a rifle. Just sitting there by a fire. Just we're just out in the open. Okay. Okay. Uh, for this type of conversation, what do I want to have? Um, I genuinely feel like I I don't know. I'm gonna have my gun. I'm gonna have my gun equipped. And I'll have my. Uh, maybe I might take the ledger off. To be fair, I might need to be very... I might need to be authoritative. Let's take that off. Perception, half light. That's fine. Hand-eye coordination, I might need it. Composure is always a good thing to, to maintain. Wear the revolutionary's hat. Let's go. Um, yeah. Let's go with this. I like how our outfit is almost is is very coordinated though. I mean, we got a bit of casual wear going on with mixed with our uniform, but Kim approves of the of the police. Kim approves of the police wear for the uh for the most part. Okay. This is it. An old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth. The deserter. Then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. Unclouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. Oh, 
I want to ask these questions, but they're like, I also want to, it's, it's funny because we're in such a situation where this is so serious. But before we proceed, we'll go through these questions. Let's, let's, let's ease into this one, shall we? Are you the fire guy? The what now? I can't hear you. There's his voice. Did you recently tell two kids to put out their fire? Two twins. I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. How? The position? Sounds like a hiding place. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown-up. You've retained your eyesight. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. A shudder of disgust passes his right side. His left side remains motionless. Did you close the blast door? I did. And you opened it. How? I fueled the generator, then used the console. I should have burned that console down. How did you know I was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music. Playing on the water. We, we definitely did give it away there, didn't we? We needed to announce our, ourselves playing the tune on our war chariot. I told you we shouldn't play sad FM. It was not reactionary. It was cool. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. Hip gyrating mental illness music. Alright, mate. Nice gun you got there. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. Is that a Bell Margrave? It's a Triangong 446. 446. Southeast Samarin made. Exotic. Must be defunct too. No modern rifle manufacturer of that name springs to mind. A Samarin rifle? How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao Commune. Military aid. It has stayed true to him. He can still make it sing. The Sinyao Commune? You heard me. It's good now, like chalk wiped from the ball. He's right. Almost no one remembers there was a third metastasis of the World Revolution in the Safari Empire, extinguished in 06. It's not wiped from the board. I remember it. They wouldn't like hearing their name in your mouth. Damn dog. The time will come to win his trust, comrade. It is not now. You need to take care of the gun first. Your weapon has stayed true to you. Mine has stayed true to me too. It's an interesting... Uh, it's an interesting sort of intimidation move to put into play. Flashing guns at each other. Yes. I bet you've killed a lot of people with it. You fascist fuck. Three, actually. That might p most likely be less than you. Unless this was your first kill. Have you come to make me one of them? His right eye twitches. With what? Fear? Rage? We have come to ask you questions. Nothing more. The lieutenant puts his hand on his holster. If you do not comply, we will take you in. Do you understand? <laughs> The danger levels here are hard to read. One moment he's a fire, the next a fire gone out. And with the police, you can keep the gun but keep it down, not one move. Or put down the gun so we can talk further. I feel like putting down the gun is obviously going to be 
Um, by the book, but also I'm holding a piece, so he might not enjoy being the only one without a hand on a gun. Keep it down. No. Ooh, okay. Okay, yep, I thought that Kim wanted to go and do that one by the book. Yep. Yeah, I felt like that was coming, but I was like, we'll see. Because I wanted to play it easy. The lieutenant aims his pistol square at the man's head and says, Put it down now, sir. Okay. Or you're gonna blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. The old man lays the rifle down carelessly and looks at it lying there. It's out of bullets, huh? He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness, like a song. Ah, <sighs> what if someone else was what if someone else was here and took the shot as well? Because we haven't found we didn't find bullet residue. We didn't find gun residue, um, or it didn't draw any attention to finding gun residue from a place that the shot could have been taken from. Apparently that gun's a walking stick, and it's empty. We don't know if there was a bullet in it. That uh, is the the bullet. This, they could be, you know, this guy could be getting framed. They're like, oh, there's an old guy that lives out here with the same rifle, so we could, like, try and pin it on him. Ah, oh, there's so many... Because it's it's not. Even though this seems very likely that this could be it, it might still not be a sure thing yet. What did you say? The future teaches you to be alone. The present. The present. The present to be afraid and cold. The old man pulls back the hood of his plastic cape and looks up into the sky. It's blue-gray, the same color as the sea. Those words. The future teaches you... Real music. Real brilliant good. That's La Revachelière, not your rock and roll misanthropy. Chanson de Soldat of the Black and Whites. Marching song. Forget about that for a moment. You need to address that remark first. I'm not a misanthrope, I'm a half dead police officer who's just doing his job. <laughs> um. I know Le River Cholier. It's the marching song of the World Revolution. There you go. One of three. In Grad, they sang brave children, favorites of history. And in Sinyao, it was. some Samaran shit, I guess. Le River Cholier. I've heard that name somewhere else in a dream. Everyone has. They named a fucking perfume after it. No, that's not it. I've talked to her. <laughs> talked to her? Yes. In the church. God, shit house. <laughs> Should have taken it down like they did in Grad. Dismantled it for firewood. All around you, the air slowly circulates the islet carrying little swallows and black-beaked seagulls in its slow drift. They all, every one of them, every bird, mammal, and crustacean. What? Keep their distance. How does it go? The song. How did it go? Something about shooting rabbits. I don't know. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's gone now. He waves erratically with his hand, annoyed that he can't remember. A little tremor passes through him. It was dear to him. He resents forgetting it. Let's pick up the gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. 
frame stocked and patched in places with tape and wire. Still warm from his parched hands. Not the metal. The metal is ice cold. This weapon has been modified several times. Inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state. Like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. On the butt you see Vespertine writing burnt into the wood. Triangon 4.46 millimeter made in Sinyao. It's as he said, it's a Triangon made in Sinyao. No one said it has to be a Belmag grave. We were just guessing. True. From ballistics, it could easily have been a triangle, too. Okay. It doesn't matter if it was made in Shanti Shanti. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition. And it does. This uses jacketed ammunition, 4.46. The right type and the right calibre. He's liking this. This rifle has been patched and modified several times. I wonder how old it is. The old man does not answer. He just stares in front of him. Stow the gun. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against him to get a confession in time. Who are you? My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. And he's listed as the deserter. So he's, like, I guess it could be said that he's been here a while. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. The Commune of Rebachol? Do you mean DICM? You're a holdover from the... From the Insulindian Citizens Militia. The Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07. Trained in the École de Contrôle Orion. And consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. Yep, he's been here for a long time. You've been on this island for 43 years. No. I've been on other islands, too. I was an Resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was 22 years ago. Fuck. Again, you've been hiding here for 43 years. Forty-three years and ten months. That's insane. It's not how a human being should live. But I had to. I couldn't just forget. I couldn't just forget what I saw. He just couldn't. You couldn't give up. He nods. But he can now. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding. Fishing. Waiting. Where the afternoon grows late, on Rue de Saint Gislaine, people walk home. Street lights will soon be lit. Further inland, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children, street hawks, and migrant laborers. The temperature is steady. Alto cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Always waiting. For what? For her to return. Her who? Girl child revolution. Interesting. 
Go Child Revolution, she better come. I too have given my life to Mazovian socioeconomics, and nothing in history is guaranteed, but revolution is still a possibility. Go Child Revolution? Always. She better come. A waste. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore. However hard I try, whatever I do. What has he done? Perhaps a confession will lighten the load. Interesting that it says what this is not the time to push. Suggestion fucked me over before, didn't it? <laughs> It, uh, this just stands out to me. This is not the time to push. What can I do? What is there? You said you deserted your unit? I was just 16 years old. 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> and of courage, too. Lapse of faith? You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took. For what? For reaction to take hold. <laughs> What's reaction? Petty bourgeois terror. It's in all men. It wasn't reaction, you were just afraid. It's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really. Not naked. It's impossible not to be afraid. It remains unclear what it is. He makes leaps he doesn't expect you to follow. And this was when? May the 13th, 08. 44 years ago. The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like... like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was... dark magic. Dark magic? The combined might of international capital. All at once, all the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. Huddled on the floor, the artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon. But I knew, I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. A terrible shame. Still within him, the lobes of his ears are red with it. The shame and smallness of what he became. You didn't go to the map room? No. I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland, in the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened at the ordinance all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. <laughs> What was that? Airships. I climbed out into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too. Shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Seen what? The mask of humanity fall from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone. Everything you love. All the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off 
just for one second to do the deed. And then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. You see the fear and power in its eyes. Then you know. What? That the bourgeois are not human. I've always suspected the same. Now is not the time. You do not be afraid to. <laughs> um, actually, yeah. I had to. I had to fight it. I could not stop anymore. Okay. What is this place? This island? It's not an island, Dwat. It's a defensive fortification of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. What was it used for? The congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in 02, retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing. Against the whole world. You mean the landing? Retaking of Revachol? Coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio they called it Deathblow. You are one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. First, I'm not one of them. Sure you are. You're our CM. Answer me. Who calls an operation against 50 million people death blow? Murderers. I know what you mean. You don't know. You haven't seen it. Iblis. Iblis? The black-eyed angel. Shaitan Ahura, the darkened one. Wow. Okay. <laughs> How have you survived all this time? How does anyone survive? I steal. Now hold on there. That's a choice. You could have become self-employed. Create the system. You're insane and grotesque. Everyone steals. Vegetables. Supplies. It's the life of a dog. <coughs> How is your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. Trying to figure out this guy's motive to kill a mercenary. Like, did was he just using binoculars and eyeballing uh, Revachol one night? A uh, Martinez one night? And he just looked at fucking happening in the window and he went look at that mercenary fuck and then just shot him like I'm trying to figure out uh, motivation for the killing or was it just a random act or was there a reason he does seem frail good for his age more like 75 than 65 trouble putting on weight could mean cancer DRCM can provide medical services you need to be looked over. I need to die. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. We have druamine and other opi opioid-based painkillers. You must be in pain. I have been running out of that stuff. A light goes on in his eyes. He smacks his dry lips. This is a serious situation. You need to be looked over and we can do it. There's nothing to look over. The triage is in, and it's black. Administer morphine. Moribund. How have you coped, mentally? I haven't. I have holes in my brain. Years missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of... I don't even know what. Inferno? You notice the lieutenant is about to say something. I would imagine it gets tremendously difficult, mentally, to live in isolation. <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's something that everybody uh, 
That's something that everybody has been forced to understand in recent years. Traitors. It's better alone. I watch the people of this city turn the lights back on more and more each year. Ruins glimmering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? How could... How have you concealed yourself all these years? It was hard in the Thames. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsoff coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequencies dead. How did you get between here and the mainland? At night. I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too. They'd started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... Hmm. Why don't you just walk there? Why am I saying, why don't you just walk there? What? You can't even... I don't want to. They're all traitors. Mm. Pigs, rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. Mm. He does not want to see life moving on. Yep. People forgetting, drinking. Laughing. So I'm like, come on, it's it's obvious why <laughs> don't ask that question. It's like it's pretty it's pretty clear. This man lives in the past. The weapons cache under St. Gislaine twenty two B in the basement. Have you been there? So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elma Graves, right? They were. Useless now. Rusted away. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. Ammo scrounging on others. Those McGraves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. He just mentioned that some of the guns had bullets in the chamber. Had, meaning those 4.46 rifles would be compatible bullets with his current weapon. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. He's like, wow, these, these guns got bullets. I'm gonna take those. Wait, how did he get down there? How did you access the building? It's locked. At least now it is. I didn't have to. Came in through the storm drains. Hmm. Storm drains? There used to be a system that connected the bunkers, tunnels and such, under the church and everywhere. Most of them are gone now. Collapsed. Just bricks. All the old infrastructure has. It's really interesting because we've got this character who is fully aware of what the city used to be like and the layouts and, and this kind of thing and is like kind of aware of all of that and uh, Martinez is moving on and they're doing new stuff and they focus on the future and building on uh, building on top of what Martinez is, making it better, improving it. The nightclub in the church and Everett wanting to, you know, build a whole thing and, you know, Everett, they're just trying to focus on what can be and build on top of what came before to, to push all of that out. So people don't, aren't aware of something like this, which makes this guy uh, easy to, easy to navigate, easy to move around. He's just literally just like, nobody knows about these things anymore. Uh, and he can take advantage of that. 
There's a small bunker under the Feld building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Killed themselves? A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. One more question. Do you smoke uh, Tio uh God, how do I say this? Tio Motiri cigarettes? I do. <coughs> you ever smoke them on the mainland? They're good. Plenty of tar. I like that boy on the pack, too. Reminds me of the last century. Tell me another thing. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorways rising above it. You said this is your termless surrender. You're with the RCM. The coalition-appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. <laughs> oh, man. Like, I want to say it, but at the same time... Damn it. We're not coalition-appointed. We just try to help people. You're the RCM. You represent the Moralist International, the enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, Le Parti Communiste dans ce monde. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <coughs> A spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. Rene, the royalist on the coast, said. Hmm. You never signed the Revacholian instrument of surrender. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? He just wipes the blood from his chin. Honorable. Honor is a feudal atavism. My motive is class. So you're a communist soldier from the communist army? No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not the army. But you said you were trained and assigned to the Defense Corps. Trained in historical materialism then assigned as a political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. Wait, what does a political commissar do? The old man does not answer. He tilts his silver head and looks at the reeds. You see a small tremor pass through his legs. Phasmid. His job was to assure the army answers to civilian control and follows the ideology of the commune. Scientific communism. A commissaire politique is a night philosopher of the revolution. A future human. Awakened from shutdown by the promise of ideology. He was like a cleric, a shepherd. So you were like a priest? No. The opposite of that. A future human, not a human of the past. That means you're a trained communist, right? He nods slowly, then another tremor. I'm also a communist. No, you're not. <coughs> you're a liberist. Look at my journal, old man. 33 communism points. S snack on those beans. You should engage him about inframaterialism. Impress him with all the ideas you picked up from the reading group. Hell yeah, let's go. No, don't. This man does not subscribe to intellectual daydreams. The communism he mourns is a planetary force. I know. 
Liberast? A liberal and a pederast. It's what most liberals are. I'm not a liberal. I told you I'm a communist. Detective, we have not come here to discuss ideology. <laughs> yeah, but that's what happens when you get into a debate with a communist. We have come to ask questions regarding a murder investigation. Oh, we're getting to the point now, are we, Kim? Man can't have small talk anymore. The old man spits into the fire pit. He does not say anything more. A jitter passes his lower body. The expression on his face is unreadable. There's some sort of interference there. Neurological. There's definitely something off with his body. Something more than just metabolism. Or even cancer. Okay, here we go. I have another serious question for you. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. Interesting. Uh, so we have more than poor health and possible neurological damage by going through the things that has put our composure at 83%. Assess his body language. What strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain or the cough or the malnutrition. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild. Yep. Like a long time. And he's alive. He's surprisingly okay. Like, he's having old man problems, but he's surprisingly okay. Indeed. He speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. Animated by what? The pale. It has possessed him. It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures. Thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. Dementia? You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid. Keen, even. Not senile. Mr. Dross, are you okay? How is your memory? No, I'm not okay. I shit blood, and I'm surrounded by insane people. There it is again. Erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. What have you been using this gun for, sir? I've used it for killing people. Yep. Here we go. A trail of blood. The lieutenant smells it too. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. Interesting. During or after the war? There is no after the war. Class war is never over. So he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. This is it. You can feel it. Like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while. But... But what? This is what you live for. This is the shit. The shit. The great serotonin jackpot. I do love serotonin. The solution. I do like solutions. Go in straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. He has been telling it how it is for the whole time. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Mm, okay. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. Get personal. <laughs> Wait, so which one do I say then? <laughs> so you're saying you killed people after active fighting stopped? What did I just say? He keeps shaking his head erratically suddenly. He brushes something out of his eye. What did I just tell you? Don't drop the ball now. I know you want to tell me. Have you killed anyone with that gun in the last week or two? I don't want to tell you anything, you grotesque murderer. And why? 
did you think that was a good idea? <laughs> Don't listen to me. I'm wrong all the time. Suggestion. Uh, why are you doing this to me? Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contractor, Cronell? The who now? Hmm. He leans in and cups his ear. He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. Mm. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it, sire. Can I ask one of these? The fascist death squad who took a bullet in the mouth on the night of March 4th. Oh, yes. That one. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachol. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The gun. The murder weapon is the perfect opener. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the tracks. Suddenly, all those tracks are so confusing. Go with something else first. What? Let me see the bottom of your shoes. You were in the, oh, the pinball man. <laughs> um, come on, what am I forgetting? We've done the ballistics. The shot came from this island. I saw you poking around there, looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascies. Did you like the view? You had direct visibility. There are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follower to use. And you had a long-range rifle in your possession. You've been here a long time, Mr. Dras. Too long. You clearly need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. He's practically admitting to it. Dead fascists, for fascists, done his part. You said, uh, Fasces. You're, ad you're admitting you killed him. You're sad for your fascia brother, aren't you? One twig got broken. Now the others are sad. He waves his hand. There's a twitch. Then one more. One in his right eye. Almost. He almost burst out there. Keep piling arguments. Anything. Oh, man. This is just a dude who's like, for him, the war is still going, you know, in his head, the, the, the war is still going. He's a, he's a communist and he's like, look at that fascist mercenary, bonk, you know, like to him, the outside world is not a, th not somewhere that he involves himself with. He is, he is still in the war. He protects and hides out in the fort from the revolution, like consequences for his actions are certainly nothing that's going through his head if he's going to perform something like this it's it's yeah it's it's just one of these one of these really interesting things where it's like we're in front of most likely at this point we're in front of the man who pulled the trigger that started this whole sequence of events uh and fo like letting the dominoes fall everything that has fallen uh come into place because of this dude who's quite literally at this point where he's just falling apart and it's not like this thing of like ha we got him and then there's like this massive motive and like it was planned out and you know all of these things fell into place it was just like uh, just a guy in the wrong place at the wrong time uh and there was just a dude who didn't like that and in his mind where the war is still happening and he's carrying the weight of that war with him does an action it's not some sort of you know connecting all of the dots um in a massive way we're like oh man how could we not have seen this it was just a dude hiding out in a sea fortress uh from from years past without there being really a necessary like rhyme or reason it was just fuck that guy 
uh, he's a fascist. And, um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's such a, it's the word that I'm looking for. It's, it's such a, uh, a clear way for this game to, like, give you the murderer or give you the, uh, give you the killer is just, like, it just, it, it all feels very realistic in the, in the, the way that this world is structured and, and what happens. It's not, like, some big, like, mystery or like it was the gardener all along it's not like and i like that i really really like that it's not like some super secret of it's someone in martinez it could be anyone and like it's like you know one of those kind of situations that there's not like some shock or surprise reveal or twist as to who could be the killer oh my god it was titus after all this it was god oh my god <laughs> And the reason why the bird was broken is because he had to pull a gun out of the bird. It was hidden the whole time, and he was repairing it to cover his tracks. You know, it's not like kind of any of that bullshit. Um, it's just a very grounded and realistic sort of. You just get to this point at the end of at the end of here. You're just confronted with a man who is uh, wasting away uh, and has been here for close to half a century. Uh, <laughs> you know, living along, um, among the reeds. It's, it's just, yeah, it's crazy. I don't need your cooperation. I've got this. Show him the, show him the weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of guns around that use military grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun. Not like your little musketeer pistol. I've seen you prance around with that. Jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons, eh? <laughs> Going against automatic rifles with a flame bomb. Of course you got all those boys killed. And there you go. He's obviously, like, he's watching everything take place as well. Damn. He saw you. He's watched it happen. Yeah. So he saw you. Okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. Stop changing the subject. We have the murder weapon. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? You think you think we have the murder weapon? 4.46 jacketed ammunition. Modified for range. We have it. This is it. I'm calling it. We have the murder weapon. Good. This feels good, doesn't it? Telling things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder. <laughs> this pushed him, but not enough. Just a little more. Why would I do this one though? Come on, what am I forgetting? Hit yourself on the side of the head. Okay. Let's back off for a moment. Tell me this. You lost, Dwight. You lost. Okay. Actually, well, let's do this then. One more time, Mr. Joss, the Colonel. We need to talk about you killing him. Petty bourgeois law. <laughs> this is all you care about, right? The only thing in the world for you types. A drop of blood in the saliva. Tear into him again. Pile it on him. Okay, let's go for this one. Wait, here it comes. The goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clasia's roof. That we, ah, that we didn't catch. Oh, yes. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. And Maybells on Clasia's balcony. Okay. So the Maybells... So the Maybells from here... And Maybell's on the balcony. Wait, don't forget the footprints. The diagonal prints in the dust in the secret space behind Classy's yeah. bedroom. Now, they're gonna come up. So he was physically there. And went through there. And those are his footprints. That's what I was... I mentioned that. Of course. Thank you, Head. Thank you. You got it. Remember? The boot prints were like no modern soul. Show us the bottom of your feet, mate. Maybe don't beat yourself anymore, though. <laughs> you're not immortal. I wonder what brand of boots you're wearing. Everything is brands with you individualists. 
Who cares what brand my shoes are? Sansa. Some shit. Show me the souls, please, Mr. Doras. Fucking imbecile. A black and white spiral pattern covers the sole of the worn out running shoes on his feet. The maker is called Sensory. You see their V shaped logo, but can't make out the size. A spiral. I'm pretty sure what it was horizontal lines, right? These are not the unusual horizontal yeah. pattern soles you saw in the dust on the floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. The size fits, but not the sole. There's a drama check. Wait, maybe it's simpler than that. Sire, he doesn't have to be wearing them right now. Exactly. People change shoes. This man steals them. People change shoes. It doesn't mean you weren't there. Near the room the victim died in, sneaking around. Racking those brains, are you? Desperate to report something back to your masters? They must have really loved that dead fuck. The lieutenant gives you a quick sideways glance and nods to acknowledge. The prints were his. You can see it in those eyes. He can't keep them from flickering, looking for something. The old man stares at his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silent suddenly, some strange process within him. A gush of wind. Seagulls in the distance. You've almost got him. Just the last little push. Maybells. Behind the victim's window. I saw them growing here. Damn Maybells. The whole island is turning white with them. He seems tender suddenly. Nostalgic even. A strange mood swing. So many this year too. The spring is coming. No. It's already here. Wash the filth away. I haven't seen these flowers anywhere else in Martinez. Only here. They blossom on the islets before. We fertilize them with our blood. Resurrection was snow white in May. Before they ruined it. South, the Bay of Martinez is dotted with little freckles of islets. Turning green. With white flowers in white snow. The coast, too before they piled their containers on top of it, filled with broken, useless trash for fat-fingered bourgeois children to play with. You must get around a lot to stay undetected all these years. Do you know any secret paths? Pinball workshops? I may. I may. A young woman named Klasia. Ring any bells? Flowers like these were behind her window. Klasia. You know her, right? She had intimate relations with the victim, the mercenary. With the victim? He turns his sight from the whitening field of flowers and falls silent, and the muscles in his jaw twitch, a spasm. There is a small tremble. Looks like a smile. A crooked smile. Yet isn't quite voluntary. He's about to burst. Yeah, because we're referring to it as the, you know, the, the victim and stuff like that. And he keeps, like, uh, bursting out with just, like, man, you must really love that fascist dude. They're really eager to get the information back to your masters, all that kind of stuff. Because th his opinion of this, of the of the victim, uh, is that he's, like, subhuman, less than human. He's not a he's not a victim. He's, he's a fucking dickhead. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's just, like, he's fighting a war in his brain. You know who he was. A coalition trained murderer. Armored and armed. There you go. He wasn't human. Yeah. The blunt end of a hammer. Dripping with blood. Yeah, he wasn't human. Like, he's, he's, that's that's his opinion. So when we're referring to him in these humanizing descriptions, he scoffs at it. It's And it's, and it's setting him off. He was a killer, but he was still under the protection of the law. Beating us to the ground, moaning with joy. You hounds get so thorough when a company trained killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years. You know, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. 
Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. This is it. Shot him. Shot him. Say shot him, not killed him. So you shot him. Oh, the inhumanity. One paramilitary less in Revachal. You can almost see him squeeze a tear out of his eye. His fists begin to tremble from the anger. The lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. Hush. He does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. While the lieutenant listens, holding his breath. Hold your breath. I had them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them. In phase. And I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death. And that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in her. And then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. Mr. Dras, are you aware you're confessing to murder? Yes. <laughs> and you were looking at Dan, the victim and a young woman, having sex through the scope of your rifle that night before you shot him? The lieutenant takes out his notebook, slowly, very slowly. The old man nods. Why? Yeah, like this is this is it. It's like it's the it, this is the thing. It's like when we're when you're in this line of work, it's what's the motive? What reasons do they have for being there? For doing this connection with the with the victim? Like, and it's just this guy that has a war going on in his head, and it's just a clear. It's just he's on one side, that guy's on the other side. He's and he must be removed, and it just. It was, that's the thing, it's just like, a, just the wrong dude in the wrong place, you know? Like, if it wasn't him, it would have been one of the other mercenaries that were there, and it could have just ended up being anyone at any moment when he just went, look at him living in this, you know, in this fascist society that beat us down and wiped out our chance at revolution, and he could, he just like views all of them as accountable, especially the RCM. Especially mercenaries, like you know, and he, he just he just lo probably it just looks at the entire city as completely. He's just on the outside of it all. Like the the motive isn't like specifically for the victim. It's just it was just a, it was just fuck that guy in particular tonight because I feel like pulling the trigger and I think there's a part of him that just wanted to. There's a part of this dude that just is ready to give in. He's like I he went to sleep knowing that uh he, they would. It, it would come eventually, and they did. Because that's what they were doing. He shrugs, then smacks his lips. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. The lieutenant's preparing the ground. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. This is interesting. Because it's why were you looking at them that, that night? It's like, what specifically drew his attention to that room in the whirling to be in a particular spot where he could shoot so accurately it would enter a man's mouth, lodge itself in its brain, and start this whole sequence of events? Was he just observing and he just saw it one night? Like, why were you looking at them that night? I'm always looking. Yeah, he's always looking. Like, he's just he's just observing the city. He's just looking at a world that he doesn't belong in. He turns his eyes to the city, and he would he would catch that looking out. And just as... You could just, like... I'm trying to give my own thoughts on, on the matter, similar to, like, what could be going through Harry and Kim's minds right now as they're trying to coax this motive out of him. It's like, what reason for being does it have? It's like, trying to piece 
this deserter in this world is like you could see that he would just be looking at the city as he's always looking and he sees this dude and he sees him with a woman and they're having a uh, they're doing a primal act of human nature you know and he's just like i've been here for 40 plus years i don't have shit <laughs> you know why does this guy get to have this when he's on the other the the other side the wrong side and it would just like it would just trigger a moment for him to just be like you know what i got this gun i got bullets like why should that guy have this when i am here shitting blood you know are you always looking through the scope of a rifle i'm just trying to understand a rifle scope has the best magnification. Helps him see all the shit. All the shit. And if you don't like it? And if you don't like it? Click. Yeah. It, like, it, that's why I said it could be anything. Like, it, it just not, doesn't have to be that guy in particular. It could just be, he could just witness an act taking place while he's looking that he doesn't ag agree with, that he doesn't like. Something snaps in the brain. He's like, you know what? Fuck that. Fuck that shit. Uh, and, and that's his motive, is he just personally doesn't like it. Doesn't have any connection to these victims, the, the, the citizens of Martinez, and, like nothing. He lives in the past and he is viewing the world moving on from a history that he witnessed so personally um, and trying to forget about it. And he lives it every single day. If it's part of the shit you see... Then you pull the trigger... Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. Of critique. He will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types mm. never do exploit it. This is a very satisfying progression of uh, everything that this game throws at you. Uh, and I think this is, is fantastic because the game starts... Uh, with the, hist the historical conflicts uh, and you learning about the worlds and what happened, why this place is so uh, broken in ruins. Like one of the first things you can do is in investigate that statue. You talk to Renee. Like a lot of the historical teachings of the game happen very early on and then form our foundations of what is going on with everybody else. Um, and then to come back to the end of the game to this point where we're confronting um, the killer uh, and it comes down to those uh, fundamental parts of history that have taken place in, in Revishol again and it's, it's like a, it's just as simple as that <laughs> you know You've got him going connect every little piece now wrap this up like a gift and he just keeps on talking start with when he first saw him it will give him a chance to ramble when did you first see the deceased three weeks ago when the rich hag came in on her galley. Mm. Her honor guard came in tow. Yeah. Joyce. He means Joyce. By that, you mean Joyce Messiah, the Wild Pines rep? Wrinkled up whore. What is, what is it with these whores and um, perasts? Aren't you a communist? Black sexual morals are a bourgeois ploy. <laughs> As to pederasty, the party legalized it in 04. My party, not your liberal masters. <coughs> so don't you sermonize me, you racist shithole. It's still bourgeois when the bourgeois does it, fiddling with their sexual organs. Yeah, he's just like, okay. And anger too. Yep. In addition to loneliness. In addition to loneliness, as I was just talking about when he's like, why should this fucker have what, you know, I'm alone on this island and have been for, for 40 years. You can, I think what's really good is that it feels like we're, we're, all, we're all on the same page and I don't feel lost in this whatsoever to the point where I really like how the game is just confirming or saying things back to me that I'm also able to communicate this is a very this is a very satisfying encounter that we're having right now and it's always nice to feel that you have that level of understanding of what's going on in 
uh, in someone's brain with an event like this. Uh, this honestly, and, th- and this game, this game brings it out uh, in you, especially if you go to the effort to really just immerse uh, yourself and live and breathe Disco Elysium, which I, I certainly, I certainly have um, fully jumped into to this game and um it's 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 worth it to have taken our time and methodically go through a lot of things instead of just trying to rush through and solve it like it's it's been very satisfying to take our time in so many conversations to learn everything um not everything you know obviously this game is a replayable masterpiece you could tell how many different sort of ways things can go but uh as as thorough as you can possibly try for a first blind playthrough this has been an intensely and immensely satisfying to um to go through this one you know <clears throat> okay moving on uh the victim arrives sometime after her they moved into a deserted apartment above the roundabout radio equipment out for all to see reactionary radio playing sloppy drunk now i've seen their kind during the landing those Occidental and messed phalangs weren't conscripts. Boys like us. They were whites. All they know is to destroy and hurt. Whites? Barely alive. They like to kill while they're on their drugs. After the landing, in the burning years, I would take shots at them. End them. The worst one, if I had a bullet to spare. I could see they've returned now. To show their real face. The face they don't dare show their bourgeois voters back on Mundi with their families and polyester clothes. What specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. Hmm. So you were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself, drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. Yeah. All right. For him to stop reacting to stimuli, to be broken off from the world, cordoned into darkness. And I wanted to see his head explode that too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second, writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. Yeah, the fact it would have been a completely different story. It would have been a completely different story if the bullet had an exit. You know, if it, if there was an exit wound, it would be completely different. You can't stage a hanging uh, when the brain the brains have been blown out. This man has seen past her, like you did, and now he longs to see her covered in blood to punish her. Interesting. I just feel like it was just loneliness, you know? Okay. We're sitting on four skill points. This is really funny, because before, I, I, what I find really interesting is I was just like, oh, these are our final thoughts. I don't think we're going to really be leveling up anymore at this point. How wrong I was. I forget how much encyclopedia and conceptualization have really kind of helped us <laughs> with a lot of stuff. Um, I'm going to, while we're in the middle of this conversation, I am going to put some some points in again. I want to color everything in my thought cabinet. There you go. I want to have, I want nothing grayed out. <laughs> there you go. Everything is colored in. Um, our final skill point. final skill point I will put into Volition. There you go. Level up those points while we're in the middle of this, because we're getting obviously a lot more of these popping in at this point. How long had you been watching her? 
since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then, just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast? What was she doing there? It was the... It was the false documents in the in the boy. Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. What do you think she hid there? Oh, actually, this could be why it's empty. This dude could have gone there after her and fucking taken the things. Her passport and tickets to Villiers. <coughs> and from there to Cachet Brut. Because he goes and he, he sneaks around, he's smoking his cigarettes and dropping them on Land's End, and he he was the one who emptied it out instead of it washing off to sea. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. This is the hidden boy she told us about. You looked into it. After she was gone. Yep. Did you keep what was in it? When we found the submersible, it was empty. No. Why would I do that? Oh. I didn't need tickets to Villiers. I put them back. If I wanted to extort someone, I'd do better. So I probably put them back, but it wasn't like sealed as well as it might have been before, and it just allowed it to float away. This implies that he's thought about extorting her. Mm. Also, a little inconsistency here. He was surprised to hear her name, Clausia, before. Would he not have seen it on the documents? Well, this is the other thing, is the passport had a different name. You saw her name on the passport, but before when I said her name is Classier, you didn't seem to recognize it. Yeah, because the passport had a fake name. I guess we'll ask it just to see if we can get confirmation of that. Are you sure? We checked the submersible. There was nothing there. Why would I need that trash? I'm not going to the yeah. There it is again. The strange neurological state he's sometimes in. You saw her name on the passport, but before, when I said her name is Classia, you didn't seem to recognize it. You didn't say Classia in there. I know. What did it say her name was in the passport? Uh, it was something. Uh, I don't remember. It was dark that morning. I only remember her face on the photo. Mm -hmm. Moving on, did you continue watching her after this? I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Revachal's the cloaker of capital now. All the bag men and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook? From the documents? She had different color hair on the photo. And glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I've heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. The bruises. You can't make that out in the scope. Yeah. And you could see her bruises through the scope of a rifle? You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. Yeah, there you go. She was up close. Uh, he was up close. Like the footprints in the pinball thing. How does he know those minute details about her body? It quickly comes to you. Ever seen her through a window on a roof? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bending man. like a bow against the glass. Mm, man. You've been through the secret route behind the whirling in rags. Those were your footprints. You just changed your shoes. I've been through all of Martinez. Every nook and cranny. And that too. Yes. That, too. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good. Funny the way light works. Far out, man. 
You turn it on inside, and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the twenties, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. Harry and Kim. Superstar cops, let's go. How did you get in there? The hidden pinball workshop. Well, if he knows every nook and cranny, he's most likely familiar with the key. I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. God damn. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? You be aware of the key. I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois gay merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. He points toward the whirling in rags. Andy found use for it. A spare key. Like the one hanging behind the Union box window. Interesting. So it wasn't about him, it was about her. Just witnessing her and what she'd done and coming here. But yeah. You wanted to punish her, so you killed him. She practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. You stare at them too. In your mind, her innocence day still turns to leaf. Airport bag in hand. Silks flowing in her wake. Yeah, it's really crazy how, you know, while he definitely hated the mercenary himself, but, like, you can see that he's just, like, he wanted the brains to spill out on Classier. It's just, like, even just, like, Classier coming here on the run, she was a target from the very beginning from people, from someone that wasn't even after her. Like... Classier being such a central element to the story is is really crazy because she's the first character that you interact with in the game. Like you walk out of your room and she's right there. <laughs> like and you I want to I want to make fuck with you is the first stupid thing that comes out of our mouth at the very beginning of the game. Uh, and she ends up being such a crucial central element to the whole experience without even realizing it herself like she was just chilling she's on the run she's hiding from something else something bigger than martinez and martinez made her you know made sure that she couldn't just lay low because of this dude and because of the mercenaries she, she gets involved in in a different kind of mess it's just it's what a tragic character just such a magnet for um a magnet for tragedy Inland Empire wants us to refer to the dream. The dream? See you tomorrow, Harry. Her voice rings in the evening air. You saw through her. So did I. <laughs> Men are insane. You saw through her. So did I. Even though we were inherently compromised in everything except volition. You're delusional. There's nothing to see in the soul of the bourgeois woman. It's the same as the surface. Sick hedonism and desperation. I'm not like that. I, I don't think like that. No one gives a shit what you think. <laughs> you and your cronies kill ten working class men a day. I've heard the statistics on Channel 8. You had feelings for that woman. There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. There have been others? Yes, over the years. It's not unproletarian. To feel something. Was that why you left the dried flowers behind her window? No. Why then? I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor, like she does sometimes. 
God damn. I really, I really want to know what would happen if we actually caught those flowers. When was this? The day after I killed him. And you brought her Maybells? Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. It's as if something put the thought there to leave the flowers. Something put the thought in you, a, a compulsion. What do you mean, put? A brief flash of terror. I just got this feeling from what you said. Do you agree? Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. A sudden pang of rage. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. One more down. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him, it was about her. Her. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. Extracted a motive. That's it. Motive. We have it. Another skill point. Why is my Inland Empire a 7 now? Wasn't it an 8? Am I going crazy? I swear my Inland Empire used to be an 8. Maybe I'm... No, actually I think I'm crazy. Am I crazy? I felt like it was eight. It must have been a... I think it must have just been a clothing change. It used to be eight. When I had the... Yeah, when I had the... The, the thing with the pages, with the, the clipboard and the, the authority minus thing. What the hell is that thing called? Ledger. <laughs> Let me put that back up again. <laughs> Hang on, did I accept it and level up? Yeah, I did. Where is she, that classier? I haven't seen her there for days. Interesting. You can say we arrested her lie. She got away. We don't know where she is. She got away, but she let us here first. She figured out someone was watching her from the sea fort. It's interesting the level of descriptions that you can go for here. Let's go for this one. Gone. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope this last week. Huh. At the island. Like she knew. Because she'd be staring at the, the, the direction of the bullet. She'd be staring right out there, you know. That's like, also, like a really terrifying thing for, for Classier, uh With her, you know, how her mental state is like... And her situation is like... A bullet came through her window and killed someone in her room and she stayed there and slept there and stayed out on that balcony smoking every day. Um, she stayed there, <laughs> you know. If, if, if I lived or was staying in a place that a bullet entered the window, I would be out of there. It's just, what it shows is Classier was at a, a seemingly dead end. No, like, where else to go? I'm hiding out in this place. And there's also, you know, she didn't know or believe if the bullet belonged for him or for her or all that kind of stuff. Like, but it's, it's just crazy that, like, with a bullet entering her most private arrangements, <laughs> stayed there. She'd look at night, crying or smoking on the roof. Staring right into me. It doesn't matter. Midtown, across the Bay of Riversham, the oceanic wind washes 40-story towers. Above them, Lucerne Central Aerodrome, a cocoon suspended in the sky by a web of suspension wiring encircled by hybrid aircraft. And Inland Empire and Shivers have both chimed into this point where this deserter are thinking about this woman and our own thoughts are chiming in, then going, Hey man, remember that woman you also long for? And, <laughs> you know, you've got holes in your own brain, dude. Like, our own thoughts trying to relate us to the killer. 
with a, a longing for a, a woman. Love did him in, in the end. Look north. On the platform, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates, and alcohol. Yet still, she smiles among the crowd, among the great gods. Uh, oh, actually, I think we're talking about Classier. For another, far south. Okay. I think we're talking about Classier. Uh, so Inland Empire related it to, you know, the dream we had with Dora. I thought Shivers was also talking about this because it was talking about the aerodrome again uh, with like the airships and stuff that I thought it was going back for the dream. But it does make sense that it would be tying right into where Classier is going with the Shivers. That makes more sense. Uh, I You can see how I could interpret it in the other way, though. Um, but there you go. This is cool. The withdrawing from amphetamines part is obviously the thing that labels it as, as Classier. So among the great ghosts of the city, she's leaving for another far south. Smaller. Distant. Hidden, not like the great chandelier she sees sparkle in the night below her. Street lights, towers, tenements, and water, and across it, a dark strip of ruins, barely visible, if she didn't squint her eyes. I wonder how she's able to move on without her documents. Or maybe, ah, oh, well, yeah, I guess maybe in that case, the documents not being there, um, the deserter said that he didn't take them uh so maybe they didn't wash away after all but classier did go and take them back and then was in possession of them and is using those to leave there on a dilapidated jetty in a nameless village two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea the ruins of a sea fort stick out of the water built by philippe the second reappropriated by the commune then lost in the landing he's there Doing what? Exactly, I don't know. Satellite officer Vic Mayer points at the ruins. Hmm. Behind that anti-aircraft something. That's why we can't see him. We're being watched and observed as well. Yeah, wow. We're being watched from, from back across there. Special consultant Heidelstam is optimistic. We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place. Where? His voice trails off as the three walk down the jetty. Wow. What's really cool and what I'm noticing here right towards the end is we got a spirit decor to light up and put a point into it. And it is chiming in much more. It really just goes to show how much the, the four to five barrier will put thoughts out there a bit more we still get electrochemistry here and there even though it's quite low just not very often we don't get a spirit decor much at all and and it's coming in a lot more now i don't know if that is uh like scripted stuff it's going to come in no matter how high the skill is anyway but it's just we're noticing it coming in um more in this part but it's directly related to you know the fact the fact that we are being observed as the men go patrol officer minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification like a rotten tooth rising out of the water good luck harry she thinks you need something good for this oh we got it we got it baby we could get more we've got him talking what else is there to get though like we have so, so many things covered who knows what he's seen and done over the years yeah but <laughs> how necessary really you could get more out of him he likes talking. There's 40 plus years of things he could have done here, Kim. We'd be here, we would die to get these stories out of him. That's how long it would take. Enough. Take him in. Bend his arms behind his back and end the Yeah, physical instruments just like, just do the arrest. Been looking at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic comedy. Draggies. Prostitutes. Rentiers. A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again. It straightens his back. The familiar putt, putt, putt of hatred. More specifically? Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez... Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world. 
listening to race-themed radio shows in the ruins, in their lorries. Pump full of steroids and Radio Revachal 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mr. Clare? Yes, the fly larva in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. Anything more? Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachal at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals, like those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. That all? The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now, her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform, Rene. throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Quayamoran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. That's all the rich really want, sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. Mm-hmm. Now, I have some questions about this. We did good when we pushed him under the horse car. Until, in the 30s, those disco oars. <laughs> The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center. Leave it only a nonsensical sputter. Man doesn't like disco. There was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people. Might be worth investigating. Boom boom morons on thin ice. Going under. Those are the tent kids. Disco whores? Whores. Is all he says. Even that word has to be pushed through his teeth with great force. The rage seethes too hard. There was something about the statue on the roundabout. And syphilis? Syphilis is a disease Philip III contracted in a whorehouse. The statue is an abomination. Abomination? The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander trillions on sparkling wine, cocainum, and monuments of himself. His son, Philip IV, the insane contracted syphilis in the womb. That is technically possible. Although Philippe the Third was not actually syphilitic, he was just mad. And he still went on to govern Revachol for 25 years. We lost two million lives toppling that mode of government. And those grotesque statues too. Hundreds of them. And it's still there. What a keen remark. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Do you know why? Because cynical advertising yuppies erected a deconstructed version of it. Because you forgot to take it down, the king is holy and his statues are indestructible, but mean it ironically. That's right. Some advertising cockroaches erected a cynical deconstruction of it. We tore it down with honest, working-class plastic explosives. And there it is again. Art is a bourgeois establishment. It's an affront to humanity. 
<laughs> Every gallery should be bulldozed, and the artists should all be given 30 years of hard labor in Yekokata. Look, mate, as a certified self-titled art cop, gonna have to respectfully disagree. Wait, it suddenly strikes you. Perhaps it was not as it seemed. Actually, it was not deconstructed so much as captured in the moment of the explosion. Very artistic. What are you talking about? It's not a monument to Philippe III anymore. It's a monument to the monument of Philippe III exploding. What is this madness? Uh, art, sir! The lieutenant, too, has cocked his head and is looking at you with a strange expression. It's not madness. It's a monument to what you did to your program of destatuing Revachol. So you're saying it's a communist monument now? It is, especially with all of that uh, graffito covering it too. So we did it. We've we've done it. 0.0002% capitalism. All from that statue. Not only. Yes, and furthermore, the design bureau people are probably left-wing too. They often are. We did always have the prettiest posters. Maybe you're right. That is how dialectics work. But understand this. Art is still a bourgeois institution. <coughs> and they all should still be sent to Yekokata. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, could, could we not? Don't be squeamish. It is commonplace to relocate the workforce as the need arises. All nations do it. It's called settlement. Some kind of bourgeois fascist. That's it for the statue then. Tell me, Mr. Dross. The fat union man let them put it there. Corrupt as he is. Probably got a fat check for it too. Shared with the law. Accusations of corruption. Push them aside with a sharp change of topic, officer. Put the heat on him. You mentioned the union is social democratic and Mr. Clare a farce of a social democrat. Another hideous disappointment. Unions are the real enemy. The true enemy of the proletariat. Placating the masses. Disappointment. So personal. He displays a familiarity with the union's top brass. Who's a disappointment? Everard Clare? That deformed toad? <laughs> I wouldn't expect him to wipe his own ass. I mean... Ah, uh, the other one. The operation. The smart one. The one who's currently away. Edgar. You mean Edgar, Everett's brother? <laughs> he talks a big game about uprising and social base. They must have sent the smart one to some university in Le Jardin. Where it's alienation, this, and hegemony, that. God, there's so many there's characters in this game or people in this world that we haven't even got a chance to meet that I would love to... I would love to meet. You know what I mean? Like, I would love to see Edgar. I would love to see other sections uh, of this of this world that people live in, in, you know, the world of Disco Elysium that's been set up. I really want to see other pieces in the world and how they're, how they're going. Like, it's, 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 it's so interesting how, um, how attractive... Um, this game makes just the things that we don't get to see that I, I really want to see, just places that are mentioned, all that kind of stuff. It's just like, I want to, I want to see. He's been sweet-talked by this Edgar. They must have met in person for such animosity to have developed. We're not the first people you've met from the city, are we? You can't live alone. The Clares wouldn't miss a man hidden in their own backyard. Not all this time. Nothing happens in Martinez without them knowing. Interesting. Of course. Maybe the clears asked him to. Oh, that's a that's an interesting line of that's an interesting line of thought. Don't go straight for the kill. Exhaust everything else first. Soften him up. Fuck, man. That that brings up. Oh, man. Instead of just arresting him for that, instead of like opening him up on other things, it opens up a, not even a, a motive from him personally. But also the potential for him to have been approached. Oh, wow. Because that again changes everything. Have you approached them? I haven't approached anyone. I've hid. It was Edgar who came to me. My god. 
How did he know you were here? He didn't just stumble in like an oaf. He figured it out. Some kids told him about a monster on the island. I told you, he has brains. Stepped right off the boat and walked down where you came. I even kept the door open for him. Thought he was a man of the left. Wouldn't rat me out. I was right about one of those things. When was this? Twenty years ago. <laughs> Neither of them could walk now, could they? They were less fat then. Twenty years ago. That's around the time the Clears came to power. What did you talk about? Edgar did the talking. Paid his respects like I were a fossil in a uniform. Offered platitudes about the struggle. Flaunted his pink degree. Even quoted Mazov. Never trust a social democrat who quotes Mazov. Oh, and charity too. They love their charity. Offered me blankets and social housing. I still have the gas cooker he brought. And he let you be here? Let me be here. The ZOC is an unlawful successor of the commune of Revachol. We took this fortification from the loyalists. Even the Clares understand this. They let him be here. Understanding was a courtesy. But why such a courtesy? Mr. Dross, did you kill the Krenal mercenary for the Clares? To incite a riot? You know why I killed that fucker, Dwat. Okay. As to Edgar, I'm not doing anything for that swine again. The potential to unearth something buried in all of this extra additional dialogue really was just, like, surprising there. But, like, ooh, it could have changed things dramatically. Again? What have you done for Edgar before? Eh? Try teaching him some Mazovian <laughs> socioeconomics. They didn't stick. We parted ways. Okay, he didn't do the hanged man for them. But he's insinuating something. Ooh. Okay. A logic check, and it's a red check. What was the deal between him and Edgar? One second, because we can definitely increase our, our logic. Um, we can increase it with some of our clothing. So I think we can we we can come back to this. We can come back to this. Um, what I'm going to do is because there's still more dialogue to <laughs> there's still more dialogue to go before we back out. And I've been sat here for over two hours as I need to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to take a quick <laughs> toilet break myself. Uh, and then I'm going to continue through this through this dialogue because it's it's very spicy and very nice. All right, let us let us continue now. This logic check. I'm going to keep it. Uh, I'm going to keep it there, just for the, the moment, and back out. It's all gone. And then we say that's it for now, old man. Stay put. I ain't going anywhere. We change in clothes now. And now I can look at this. I can sell it for 70 bucks. The Bolt Action 4.46 caliber Triangong is the poor man's sniper rifle. While not the most reliable of firearms, it is relatively precise due to a very manageable recoil, thus allowing the shooter to take multiple cons uh, consecutive uh, consecutive shots fast. This particular piece is mi it's missing a scope, though. Interesting, uh, interesting enough, it says this particular piece is missing a scope, though. But he has obviously stated that he has used... A scope to observe. Um, where's the scope? Does it attach? Is Was it a different rifle that was used? Is this not actually the murder weapon? Are we not highlighting the fact that there is a scope missing? Who knows? Can we trust a confession um, and stories from a man who's not all there mentally? Who knows? Let's increase our logic and find out, because I would like to pass this logic red check, please. Which is actually going to change some other things about our uh, character. I think we've got our logic shirt, right? This is our logic shirt instead of hand-eye coordination. So that's a logic plus one that should put that in the 60s? Or was it 72%? That'll, that'll bump it up. 
I don't... Uh, and then instead of encyclopedia, we can get some more logic as well. What is our encyclopedia at? It's at seven. It'll go down to five. I can... I'll also do that. We'll, we'll do logical glasses as well. Oh, actually, our hat. Plus two logic instead of a plus one authority. Oh, that's the... That's the logical one to do! Give me my encyclopedia glasses back. Alright, logic at plus three should be chill, actually. And I don't need to do smoking. Look at this task list. It's empty. There's no tasks there. Don't look. The old man his lip curls into a snare at the memory. 92%. The connection comes to you like a splash of cold water. Dark, cold water. 20 years ago, when you met Edgar, the Clares didn't run the Union yet, did they? <laughs> a sputter from the old man. He acknowledges it. Here we go. A twist behind the dark bend. Who did? That bourgeois cow. Tiffin Holly was her Tiffin name. Tiffin Holly. Licked the rich man's hand every time he came to town. Never seen a labor leader so hot on mutual cooperation. Tiffane Holly. And money. She liked that too. That Holly was a real bridge builder and a deal maker. Bordering on sentimentality, it drips out of him, tempered by something familiar to you. A familiar rage. Ooh, and then she just disappeared. Uh, the, the brothers could have come to him and f to take her out, maybe. She was also a woman, wasn't she? Like that classier. She was. And she was real soft on those money men. Had a Barbara Muscova bag over her shoulder that she liked to bring to work. And then she just disappeared. Called in, they say. On the eve of battle. Ran away. Vanished like a piss stain. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not assisted murder then. No, that's not quite it. Is oh? it? Did she? They say her daughter called in, not her personally. Mm. But that wasn't really her daughter, was it? No, I guess it was not. Huh. Edgar had someone make the call. Why is that, Mr. Dross? She couldn't make the call herself. Because she was dead. Here it is. The bend in the river. Why? Because she was dead. Because she was dead. Just say nothing. The cow caught a bullet in her right lung. Fell into the canal, grasping her tit and drowned. Or bled. Hard to say. It was a sloppy job. And a moving target. She was going home. Waddling. Dressed in yellow. Drunk like she often was. The ruins were black around her. And she had a yellow leather bag under her arm. She tried to cross the canal. She was a, a giant yellow target for this guy to, to knock off, to put the, the Claire's in power. I wonder what uh, the deserter would be thinking of Harry and his fucking crashing the motor carriage into the, into the ice and all that kind of stupid sh shit that we got up to when we arrived here. Heading home to Grand Coron or Betancourt, some place like that. Where they build those new batements for the people who flourish in the hell around her. And the ruins. And it's another thing of you killed or you shot her again. You shot her. Someone shot her. Or maybe the cow just fell. My memory is full of holes. All I know is... Another big spike of rage. Different from the one he has for her. Nothing changed. Not in the material base. Not in the hegemony. There was no uprising, just words. The Union fizzled, sogged. Nothing came of it, nothing. Edgar didn't keep his part of the deal. Huh. Hmm. If you were to testify to this, give the RCM something on Edgar, you could walk. Interesting. Because this is like a past crime that has occurred and has been like just never brought up ever because no one's there's been no RCM here in 40 years um, comes in and then he's like if he gives this it talks about how the clears got put into power this testimony uh, 
really weird. You would let this man walk, Kim? He's he's kind of he's kind of a loose one. He's a loose unit. We would strike everything you've done and process you as a POW. You were in a war. You were on assignment. We could even extradite you to the Samaran People's Republic. A degenerate worker state. Go shit. No, thank you. I'm Reva Sholian. My days are short. I will rot away here in a moral intern cell. I will not testify to anything. But you did do it. I saw it happen, and I liked it. That's all I have to say. I didn't live and fight for 40 years to end up as a collaborationist. I've heard it on Channel 8, 40 AM, Radio Revachal, late night. Everyone is a blobber in this world. Everyone betrays everyone. They're all already locked up for betrayal. The best ones, the ones with heart, were slaughtered, trampled. Secret task. What happened to the previous four women? There you go. What do I want to level up at this point in time? What do I want to level up? Hmm. I can't trust suggestion anymore. It keeps ruining my life. <laughs> uh, let's go for... Spirit decor. The same old freezing hatred. There is plenty here to work with once he's in custody. Yeah. And the lieutenant knows it. He gives you a little nod to proceed. So the boom, boom, boom morons on the ice. They were boom, boom imbeciles. At least they're not there anymore. What more is there to say? They're duped by bourgeois culture. I've seen their kind pop up. Like worms after the rain. Oh, there's plenty to say, hardcore man. Hardcore man. You know, those beats are actually quite progressive. I don't think now is the time for this, officer. Kim, you are you need to be thinking hardcore. To no avail. Beats. Violent bourgeois language. Even music is a form of homicidal competition. <laughs> Saxophone blowing anti-communism. By the cock parading in his colourful uniform, you mean Renee? Every fucking morning for 34 years. Throwing that ball. One ball against the other. I always loathe that game. That is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. Royalist ghouls played like it was life itself. Click, clack across the water each day. And that uniform, like a parrot plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race. A patank maniac race traitor. Now I don't, I don't know about... I remember him. I remember him from La Nos. Not him, personally. His make and model. There were tens of thousands of them. I thought we took them all out before the liberals came to their rescue. We missed one. That one. Fat and plump, like a pheasant, just begging to be popped off. Please, Mr. Dross, shoot me. Actually, it's quite a genuine surprise that he didn't, all things considered. He whispers with such predatory hunger, it borders on longing. You'd like to kill him? This is really interesting because um, it makes me wonder if... I feel like this is... If you know the answers and maybe if you replay this and do it a bit more efficiently and focus on th some other things, you could potentially get here much earlier in the week instead of being here at day eight. And I don't know if... It feels like maybe Renee's death occurs at a particular day a particular uh, on a particular point so you could potentially get here while Renee is still alive you know so there could be some differences there you'd like to kill him not yet 
I like to look at him strut around, place the crosshair on his medals, right on his face, and just fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bonbon melt in my mouth. Now, such a scary thought is like just the city that you're in, just doing your day to day activities that you could just, there could be someone just literally with a scope on you. Um, just playing with the idea uh, of your life in their hands just, just because. Save the treat for later. The lieutenant asks cheerfully. He is a juicy bonbon, that one. A real treat for the black day. The blackest. When I put that gun in my own mouth, I think. No, don't waste it. Put this lead in that cock, Rene. For the boys he killed. And then I look at him throw those balls, and I suddenly feel... better. I even hid one bullet, so I'd always have one for him. Haven't seen him around lately, strutting around. Must be down with arthritis. I hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. There you go. So if maybe if you come here before that, obviously the the dialogue will be different. Hearing it may destabilize him. Are you sure you've gotten everything from him? Hearing it may destabilize him. I think this is the last one for us to talk about. We have gotten everything from him. For the most part. Yeah. Oh, and, and then we just go, you're under arrest. Rene is dead. He died of old age a couple of days ago. No. Yes. I waited too long. I waited too long and now he's dead? I'm sorry, Mr. Dross. I understand you <laughs> knew him for a long time. Kim. They're all dead now. Fuck it. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have done. There must have been a thousand black days on these islands. His health ailing. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's genuine surprise that he wouldn't have shot him by now. You had a thousand chances to kill him. And I blew them all. What does it matter now? He's gone. Ancient dust. You cared about him? All human beings care about each other. I cared for... Seeing his head explode. And now, God damn this world. I'm sorry. Fuck you. <laughs> you okay, Mr. Dross, to go on? You think I haven't seen people die? It's all I've seen them do. Fuck and die. All the other plans we had. To love. To colonize the pale. It's all fucked. He's not okay. This is just another black day in a row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together, making him endure. An idea told to him by grown-ups from radio towers and leaflets in beautiful print when he was still a teenager. Everything is possible if we fight. And then he lost it. So did they all. And there we go. Glad we talked about what? Yosef Lilianovich Dross, you're under arrest for the murder of Ellis Cortenaire. What? But you said I would be taken to the... This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. Mm -hmm. He's, yeah. The wind picks up. The silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. The lieutenant continues like an incantation. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Going to be alive in 44 days? Do you understand? But... Kim, he's afraid. No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Does it have room for three? Hang on. A legendary 
perception check. Wait. Ooh. Well, we're doing it now. 28%, a red check that can't be retried. Ooh, this is a low one. Okay, let's see what happens if we end up failing this. I don't know if we need to say, does it have room for three? Oh, I clicked, and it did work. You thought you <sighs> but it's just the reeds. No, okay. Mm, interesting. We were one away. Oh. Maybe we could all fit in there. Does it have room for three? Not really. We could escort him to the pier, then either one of us can take him inland while the other stays here, but... But then, who watches him? While you're coming back here. Who watches him there while I come back for you? You come back for me? How about I go and send a boat back for you? What is this farce? <laughs> this is a fucking farce. I can't. Something is happening. Stop. Something is happening. Lillian, you could ask her maybe. Uh, we could all fit in the little boat? Actually, no. Maybe I can just ask that net picker to watch him? This is no harmless old man. Yeah, I know. This fucking world. This world. What is this? Okay, hang on. This is not being spoken. Below the confusion and rage, a fit of jamais vu like yours, the thought passes. More pressing matters take its place. No, listen. Listen now. Dude, what the fuck is happening? You could come back for me. Once you've taken him to the precinct, I could come back to you. Once I've taken him to the precinct. What the fuck is going on here? Why does this feel so strange? What is the, what is the difference between one of us going? I'm going to... What, what, what should we do? This is what happens whenever there's confusion. You flick a coin. You flick. You flip a coin, and that's how you decide. This is how it is decided. Okay. Heads. Kim goes. Tails. I go. It's a... It's a... I gotta go again, because it's not a good roll. What did I say? I said heads, Kim goes, tails I go. And I dropped it again, so... Heads. Kim goes. Tails I go. We got heads. You could come back for me once you've taken him to the precinct. No, no. It would take a whole day on this island. You go and transport the prisoner. I'll be here. Oh. I can escort him to the pier with you. Okay. No need to be polite. I'll do it. Maybe you're right. Okay. No need to be polite. I'll do it. This world. What are you okay. talking about? Is this? Okay. So I think, I think I have to go no matter what, but I did offer for him to go and pick me up. We flipped the, flipped the coin anyway. The wind is cold. From the east, your skin is crawling suddenly. What is happening? What the hell is going on? Uh, what is going on? Shivers, man. <gasps> Holy fucking shit! No way! No way! No way! delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. It's real! No fucking way! Kim! 
It's the fucking Insolithian Phasmid. It's real, dude. Look at it moving. It's fucking real. It exists. It's fucking massive. It's huge. It's not going to get caught in a trap with locusts. Oh, it's beautiful. Lena and Morel and even Gary, to an extent, would be so fucking happy to know this. Dude, that's the that was that would have been the perception hearing success, but it's revealed itself. I'm I am absolutely in shock that this is happening right now. What is that? What are you talking about? The giant stick insect. There's nothing there. What? I can't be that. I this can't be a figment of my imagination. It's right there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. It's massive. It's just been there the whole time. Just so fucking blended in. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand rise instinctively. I finally got insane. Put your head in your hands. There is. I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Oh, Kim can see it. It's real. Four simple words. Thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. Kim, the cryptozoology stuff was was crucial. It was worth it. But that means it's real. It's really there, spinning slowly in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. What? It's real, dude. What the fuck? Approach the insect first, get close to it. It's fucking real. That's wild. What the fuck? Thank you so much for watching this episode, guys. We will be bringing part one of the ending of Disco Elysium to a close uh, because it does stretch for quite a, a long period of time. So just wanted to pop in here to wrap this one up and say goodbyes properly. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed uh, this piece of the ending and I'll see you in the next and final episode of Disco Elysium.